Edwards, welcome to Face Off. Selamat datang ya ke Face Off. Jadi uh, setakat ini, of late, we've got a lot of stories making headlines in Malaysia. Of course, those which are religious and racial in nature. You've got your sex bloggers jailed, yeah, for their controversial Ramadan greeting posted on Facebook. We've also got Islamists asking the Vatican's envoy to leave Malaysia and Muslim contestants disqualified from beauty pageants. Also recently, non-Muslim students made to eat in the toilet during fasting month. Now, all these have propped up on our social media network, especially what has become of moderate, friendly and warm Malaysia. Bersama kami untuk uh, berbincang secara lanjut isu-isu berkenaan ialah YB Khalid Samad yeah, to YB Dari uh, Shah Alam, the man also in the middle of uh, one controversy. Only one? Oh, only one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out more here. We'll find out more. Welcome also, Annie Chen, our resident guest. Yeah, uh, YB, you were taken to task yeah, for one saying that, um, well, the Vatican envoy has already um, apologized. Sudah meminta maaf, jadi mm. let's not prolong the issue. Apakah uh, pendirian YB sebenarnya dalam isu ini? Yeah, I think uh, it's not really an issue, it's just something which is being used by certain quarters to create uh, social tension uh, mm -hmm. for their own uh, political agenda. Uh, I mean, when he, when he uh, comes to Malaysia and he sees that in certain states you are allowed to use uh, the word uh, Allah for the Christians and in certain other states you're not, and uh, obviously he would think that you know uh, it's something which uh, is uh, open for discussion so he gave his opinion uh, his opinion is his opinion uh, uh, but uh, by virtue of the fact that he's a, a visitor he should not uh, speak on the issue uh, especially when it's uh, in court right but uh, i do not believe that it was intended to uh, create any uh, social strife or to pressurize the uh, courts or the government uh, it was uh, uh, sincere and uh, uh, how do you say, open uh, opinion that was uh, presented. Mm. And uh, after he was uh, taken to task, he has apologised. So as far as I'm concerned, the issue is settled and there's no, no need to, uh, uh, you know, how should we? Other. How should the rest of the world, especially the non-Muslim, address uh, the word Allah or God? What should they be calling? What should I be calling uh, <laughs> the Muslims Allah, which I don't know what to call and what to use right now? <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. I think the whole issue has been uh, politicized uh, to such a state that you cannot uh, talk about it and debate the, uh, on it uh, rationally. Yeah? I mm. mean, uh, as far as uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, the Prophet's uh, father was uh, named uh, Abdullah, which means uh, servant of Allah, and he died before uh, the Prophet was born. So that clearly shows that the word Allah was a word that was being used by the uh, uh, Jahiliyyah or the uh, non-Muslim uh, community in uh, Saudi Arabia, in Mecca, uh, even before the birth of the Prophet uh, ﷺ. Uh, but the current uh, law, uh, which is being uh, enforced in uh, many of the states, uh, basically is to, to avoid uh, confusion. Mm. Yeah? Because uh, uh, I, I believe, and many of the international ulama uh, have uh, clearly stated that uh, it's allowed for non-Muslims to use. Mm -hmm. But uh, something which is allowed, can be disallowed if it is feared that it can create a confusion and it can create a tension. So obviously on that basis, uh, this is where you know in, in Islamic uh, uh, terminology they say that you make a ruling based on the uruf or the, uh, or the uh, uh, swasana, the reality of the society, right? So currently uh, the Malays in Malaysia, are in, in Semenanjung in particular, uh, in particular are so uh, unused to non-Muslims using the word, so they feel that if the non-Muslims use it, then it can create uh, confusion. But to me, it's a uh, it's a matter that can be quite easily uh, clarified. As a Muslim, can mm. you um, can you <coughs> clarify? Can Muslims use the word Allah, and can the non the word, yeah. yeah, can non-Muslims use the word Allah, and can it be used in the Bibles? Yeah, there, there are so many uh, instances in the uh, life of the Prophet ﷺ where he communicated with the non-Muslims, and even with the Christians uh, in, in, in the Hejaz in, in, in Saudi, it was uh, a town called uh, Najran, where the, non uh, non, uh, the, the Christians stayed. And uh, they came and visited the Prophet, and they discussed, and ob obviously it was all in Arabic. 
and the word of Allah, uh, the word Allah was being used by them as well, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, when the Prophet invited them to so can. Islam, yeah, I mean, uh, but it, it being uh, disallowed in Malaysia, in 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 Peninsula <coughs> Malaysia, uh, in most of the states. Uh, basically on the basis that it can create confusion. Sure. What so you that's, just that's shared is it. very educational. Uh -huh. First time I'm listening okay, to all okay, this. All right. However, I still don't get the answer. What should I be addressing? What should I sh what, what should I say? You ask me, I'll say Allah. But if you ask them, they'll say something else, which you have to ask them. Like, so if they? I were to say it, I would <laughs> up then, right? You, you're allowed to say it. I think as far as fa past is concerned, we said that... Uh, as far as past is, past is concerned. Right? Oh. Uh, and even, yeah, I mean, in, even in the Slango song, uh, the word Allah is there in many of the state the uh, songs. The, the word Allah is there, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's a very strange. It's been it's been it's an issue that's being politicized, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but politicized uh, by who? By uh, those who want to create the uh, uh, tension and in the and belief that be? in the belief that uh, you know if uh, Pak Captain Rakyat comes to power, then the non-Muslims will uh, you know uh, come to power. So, so are you so saying the Barisan National Government is politicizing NGOs which are aligned to its AMNO? Uh, For example, very Bukasa? clearly. Bukasa. Uh, uh, Jati, yeah, and uh, many of the Amno people themselves, and uh, of course the religious departments based on the instructions that they have been given. Speaking about Pakasa, as you mentioned, yes, Pakasa, yes, yes. Uh, what is your opinion and take on someone like Zulkifli Nodin? I mean, uh, the way he publicly really just disgraced the Indian community and that, also uh, made fun of the Hindu religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, that's completely unacceptable in Islam. Islam. In the Quran, there are very uh, clear verses which prevents us from making fun of uh, other religions and, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And uh, I think the, the Malaysian government has to be strict and has to be fair in, uh, on, on, on this matter. I mean, if you take action against non-Muslims who make fun of Islam, then you must also take action against Muslims who make fun of uh, non-Muslim religions. I mean, you know, this is, uh, this is the justice which Islam demands, right? So mm -hmm. you shouldn't... Uh, uh, have uh, some form of preferential uh, prosecution. So you're saying action yeah, should so be taken against Zulkifli I mean, Nordin as taken, well. You've taken you've taken action against uh, Elvin and Vivian, mm. <coughs> which uh, actually to me is uh, uh, yeah, I would believe that they are that just uh, uh, rather ignorant and uh, uh, how do you say uh, you know childish. completely <laughs> stupid and childish action, uh, which I believe uh, has no malice intended. They thought it was a duck comedy, you know, they mm. thought it was something funny. This is the problem with uh, the society to, a, to an extent. And now. amounting to sedition. <laughs> uh, That's yeah, one they, of they the take, charges. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Uh, but which uh, I think they should bring uh, to court and uh, give him a fair trial, give them a fair trial. Mm -hmm. And if uh, their, their intentions were not uh, seditious and they were just completely, you know, being childish and being stupid, mm -hmm. uh, then what uh, we should take uh, an, an incident in the time of the Prophet as, as a guideline. Uh, there was a time when a, a Bandui Arab came to see the Prophet in the mosque and he wanted to listen about Islam. And then uh, while waiting for the Prophet, he, he, he peed in the mosque. Yeah? And the Prophet uh, was told by the companions and uh, his, uh, the Prophet said, uh, uh, leave him, let him finish uh, his peeing. And when he's finished, you, 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 you throw a, a water over it. Then you tell him that this is a mosque and you're not supposed to pee in it. So it was completely an act of complete ignorance. ignorance. Uh, uh, with no malice intended, sure. right? Mm -hmm. So I think sure. uh, on that basis, uh, Islam also and the Muslims must be willing to show some compassion. So the sure. AP yeah, did not sponsor, did they sponsor the sex bloggers? Doing what they did. Uh, you have to ask the DAP, but obviously they've denied. I mean, sure. uh, this is just a <coughs> wild allegation uh, again yeah, for political uh, purposes. Mm -hmm. You seem to be uh, very moderate in the way you think and how you interpret uh, Islam as a religion. Mm -hmm. And my understanding of uh, learning a lot about Islam is something that is a, a fantastic religion, is a very Sufi religion. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think the ulamas, the traditional ulamas in past, agrees with you that much. Is there a strong fraction between within past yeah, itself? Yeah, because you have the traditionalists, which mm -hmm. are are the ulamas and mm. also the moderate. Is there such a thing? Can you clarify? Because that's the perception that a lot of people are getting. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, we've been together in past. I've been in past since 1983. Are you a moderate? Oh, <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, quite ascribe uh, to you know, this kind of classification. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think what's important is that in past, we're all trying to uh, use the Quran and the traditions of the Prophet as our guideline. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. So uh, that obviously, there, there are differences of opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, differences is it in serious? Emphasis. It's not that serious, but some people are trying to make it uh, uh, something serious. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, our main uh, problem uh, occurred, obviously, is when we started having the Pakatan Rakyat. 
And uh, when we won the elections in 2008, there were some factions who felt that uh, we should go with uh, UMNO, mm -hmm. Barisan National, to form a, a, a government between PAS and UMNO in Slango. And uh, it was opposed by mm -hmm. me and certain other people. And uh, from that uh, point, uh, we, they, they, they started to create uh, 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 you know, classifications and saying that, oh, these are the Erdogan and, and so on. So, so these, these were people who are more comfortable working with Malay Muslims rather than with uh, PKR and mm. the DAP. Do you think perhaps the so, poor performance of mm. PAS in G13 was also because you were in Pakatan Rakyat and not like before when you were, you know, standing mm. on your own? Well, we, we, yeah. we fared worse when we were standing on our own. I mean, the only time that we had this kind of uh, number of uh, seats in Parliament uh, was uh, in 1999 uh, election. That was the first but time we had 27. But don't you think that you fared better in 2008? Yeah, we fared better because we won Kedah. The reason why we lost Kedah, the reason why we, uh, we, we didn't fare mm -hmm. as, 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 as well in terms of number of seats uh, is because we lost the parliamentary seats in, in Kedah. And that was uh, a state which we were running on our own, so we can't mm. put the blame on the DAP or the PKR. I sure. mean, that's, that's something that we have to do our post-mortem and we find out what was the reason. Uh, and, uh, and what was the reason? Uh, yes, and uh, why we have to do a post-mortem on that? It's not done uh, yet. No, it's not done yet. Yeah? So, obviously, uh, the uh, ex... Uh, a lot of fingers were being pointed to the MB. Yes, the ex-MB. So, you know, it's not... It's not it's an opinion, uh, but uh, we have to do a proper post-mortem. There were many uh, things which we felt should have been done, which were not done, but they might have been constraints. You know? It's so, still very much uh, shown yes, that yeah. the Malay mm. Muslims are not comfortable still uh, working together with the other religions well, or the other races. The, that's yeah. because of the influence of the uh, mainstream media, which uh, creates uh, uh, the fear, the fear-mongering, the extent to which it goes. Uh, making uh, various claims saying that you know it's going to be turned into Malaysia is going to be turned into a Christian state and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's being played in uh, TV3 every day, in and out, in and out. And people who don't access, don't have access to the uh, internet, like also the like blog people, yeah, yeah and the blogs, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, even in, in the in the blogs as well. You know, those people who don't have get access direct to mm -hmm. to us uh, will uh, probably be swayed like, because if they listen to it every day, like so this for example, yeah, why this? One of this yeah. is one of the. Blog, mm. Blogging that was done where you were, uh, well, 